The bye week is over. Florida Gators football is back. And as always, it's Wednesday. We're talking depth chart only here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown Gators, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. Happy Wednesday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with whole nine sports and Giants Country of SI.com. And before getting into today's content, I'd like to thank LinkedIn Job for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Lockdown College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash Lockdown College. Terms and conditions apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, join the Lockdown Gators Discord. The link is in the description as always. But now we're talking about depth chart because it's Wednesday. And yes, last week was the bye week, but this week is... Not nah, this week is Georgia week, and I want to call it Georgia hate week, but here's my issue with that. We hate Georgia every week, right? So, so do I have to call it Georgia hate week, or do I just call it any, any week, any week, all 52 of them hate Georgia, can't stand it. But as always, Wednesday night, the death chart comes out, and we always here try to make a couple predictions, guesses, try to make suggestions, maybe call it. I have three suggestions today. All three of them are on the defensive side of the ball because I promise you this is going to be one of the most physical games that the Florida Gators will see all year. You thought Utah was tough. You thought Kentucky was tough. Georgia will punch you in the mouth repeatedly. So let's get physical here. First up, Kamari Wilson is the first name I have here. Kamari Wilson over, I'm assuming, Trey Dean, but maybe Rashad Torrance. Because Trey Dean has been the better tackler of the two in terms of physicality and consistency. It's been Trey, and I know Trey Dean gets a lot of slack, but I promise you, he has been the better option there. And so maybe you go Kamari Wilson and Trey Dean. And also on top of that, obviously, uh, I believe it was Friday or maybe Thursday, where Kamari Wilson tweeted something like, my time now and it kind of sent gators twitter into a spiral about oh my goodness is kamari wilson a starter is trey dean benched is rashad torrance benched <laughs> maybe i don't know but here's the thing also both safeties in trey dean and rashad torrance have struggled this year kamari has been pretty sound against the run which guess what george is going to want to do they're going to want to run the ball so that's what they do a lot whether it's with Stetson Bennett, any of their running backs, Brock Bowers is going to do it apparently at times too. Like It's just incredibly frustrating with how good they are at running the football. And Kamari Wilson has been pretty solid against the run. So maybe you bring him down into the box and basically play him as a light linebacker and have him go against the run as well. So maybe that's the case. I don't know if it will be. Personally, I don't think it will be. I don't know. I, I, I am totally on board with Kamari Wilson starting at one of the safety spots. Maybe even star. And you just go, yep, well, we're going to keep our two starting safeties in. But we're going to have a third safety, a third actual safety starting at star. Maybe that's the approach to it. Um, I'm on board for it. I just, I don't know if it will happen. And so that's where I'm torn on it. And I know this one, a lot of you are going to hate, but that's just because you're I don't know. I don't even know what to say about Florida Gators fans. I think this man is not a good cornerback, but Avery Helm, I think, should be in the starting lineup. And it honestly, genuinely, has nothing to do with Jaden Hill's knee not letting him play man. Maybe he feels better and can do that consistently. Sure. It has nothing to do with Jason Marshall can't play cover three. None of that. What it has to do with Avery Helm here is... Same thing as Kamari Wilson. Same thing as the next guy, by the way. Georgia's going to run the football a lot. A lot. Avery Helm has easily 
been the best run defending corner on the team. And sure, maybe you you would have a valid point if you said this, by the way, that you don't play a run support corner just because you're playing Georgia, because Georgia also has talented receivers on the outside, which is a fair case. However, I think Jaden Hill has been a liability against the run. Jason Marshall's been fine. I want it to be Jason Marshall and Avery Helm. Jaden Hill's been a liability. Devin Moore, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't want to throw him out there. I think this is a horrible game to be like, hey, you've been solid against the run. Now you're starting a corner um, for the first time ever. I think that's a bad decision. But I will say, Avery Helm, best run defending corner on this team by an insane margin. Jason Marshall's been average. And I think when you're playing against Georgia, you do, and we'll talk about this more later in the week, but you do what Missouri did. You play press man, you get physical at the line of scrimmage, you blitz and you bring pressure, and you have your DBs come up to make a play against the run. I think that if you're going to ask your DBs to do that, Avery Helm has to be one of the guys, especially when you just add in the play press man part. I don't think Jaden Hill is ready for that. I don't. If he is, then so be it, but I don't think he's ready for that. I don't think Jalen Kimber is ready for it. I don't think Devin Moore is ready for it. I think that this is one of those games where maybe you don't rotate your corners a ton. Maybe you just throw them out there and you say, this is the duo that we're rolling with. This is the duo that we're going to continue rolling with for the remainder of this game. We're going to play press man. We're going to establish, not dominance, but we're going to establish physicality immediately. And we are going to continue establishing that physicality for the remainder of the game. I think that's the approach that you should take. So obviously my depth chart suggestions are going to kind of play off of that as well. Third player, Justice Boone. Um, And here's the part where this is a bit difficult to kind of decide. This has, like, like most of these, this has really nothing to do with who he's replacing in terms of that that player's bad, that player's struggling, whatever it is. This has nothing to do with that. Avery Helm, I want him to start because he's the best run defending corner. Jason Marshall's the second best. Kamari Wilson, want him to start because he's been good against the run. Simple as that. Justice Boone, same thing. This this part is not um this part is not an indictment on Prince Liam and Maileen at all in any way, shape, or form. This is me saying Justice Boone is great against gap runs. I don't know what it is. Like he, Against zone runs, he's all right. He is very good against gap runs, and George is going to do that a lot. And I think that when you're looking at this defensive line, you have to be physical up front, and Princely is physical. Princely, I, I love Princely. I mean, I called him out a lot early in the year. He has done nothing but clutch up after that and been just a dog. I just think this isn't the matchup for him, and that's okay. Sometimes you have a matchup that not favorable for you. That's cool. Then you then you go somewhere else. But I think that Justice Boone should be the guy. I think that he can handle that gap run, and he can kind of kind of meet you at the point of the attack, and not only meet you at the point of the attack, but be very physical with you at the point of attack. And I think that's a fantastic strategy. So I will say, yeah, Kamari Wilson should start. Avery Helm should start. Justice Boone should start because this is a game where, and Bud Davis said this yesterday in the show, this is a game where you have a very slim chance of winning. I'd rather go out aggressive and I'd rather go out physical. And that's what Florida should do. And I think that those three players in Kamari Wilson, Avery Helm, and Justice Boone give you that opportunity to do that. But now, like always, every Wednesday, joining me will be Hayden Hanson, Florida Gators freshman tight end. But first... As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier for you to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people that you want to interview faster and for free. With simple tools like screening questions, it makes it easier for you to focus on candidates that you want to hire with just the right skills and just the right experience you could prioritize potential candidates. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster who wants to spend all that time looking for candidates on LinkedIn, which can be insane, by the way, it's really fun. Um, did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Join in. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Joining me now for Locked On Gators, like he does every Wednesday, is Hayden Hansen, Florida Gators freshman tight end. And 
Hayden, it, it was a bye week this past week. This past Sunday was National Tight End Day, so happy holiday to you. Um, what were your thoughts on the bye week? Kind of what was practice like last week leading into it, and what what you guys do this weekend, if anything? Yeah, so I mean, uh, we really didn't slow down at all, um, especially after the LSU game. Uh, we just kind of used as motivation. Um, it was about this. It was the same all the way up till Friday. We got a little day. We got time off on Saturday, and then we were back on Sunday. So I mean, we really didn't have much time off and we came back this week and it's like a regular week. So um, we're just preparing for Georgia. Yeah, and kind of how great was it for the timing to work out the way it did for the Florida Gators with a bye week? Because of course, in injuries were starting to pile up a little bit there. And I'm sure general fatigue was also piling up and seven games played. So the bye week is basically smack dab in the middle of the season. Got an insane schedule <laughs> coming up and, you know, Gators – got to finish strong for this season so the timing was kind of perfect i want to say for this bye week yeah i mean we really needed to get our legs back under us uh, recover uh, some key players really uh, advance in their processes of getting back on the field so um, yeah i would say it was about the right time and um because i mean we were going pretty hard so um, especially our practice environments i feel like they're a little different uh, they're pretty fast paced so it was good to have our bye week and what and uh, now i mean it's Georgia week. Obviously, we all hate it, and we can joke all we want about it being Georgia hate week, but we all know we hate Georgia 52 weeks, so that doesn't matter. But now that it is Georgia week, and I'm sure there's a little something extra going into it, so what is the feel for this game? Yeah, I mean, um, rivalry, like I said last week, um, I mean, it's just these SEC games are different. Um Everyone wants to beat the number one team in the country. I mean, uh, so, I mean, that's always extra motivation. Uh, I mean, even just in practice, I mean, they know what we're up against. We, I mean, not that we don't take reps seriously, but today like, it's just more intensified this week because everyone's making sure to give the perfect look to execute the perfect rep because we know once the ball snaps, it's no joke. And, I mean, number one team doesn't come, just, just doesn't, like, get handed out, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, it – what I'm most excited to see is how we come out that first drive. So, I mean, I feel like Georgia, Georgia's, Georgia's still really good. Don't get me wrong. But, I mean, if there's a chance to beat them, I feel like it'd be this year because, I mean, last, I mean, last year they were just insane. I, mean, I feel like they, there's a little more spots in there to beat them at. So, Yeah, I mean, I, th- I feel like this year you've seen kind of, um, we'll say, some kinks in the armor this year from them. Um, but you mentioned last year's game and just how insane of a team they had. Last year was also the Georgia game was Anthony Richardson's first career start. It was against Georgia, which, by the way, is just the least ideal way to possibly start your first game against that defense. And it it didn't go well, although I will say it went better than initially expected. It was fine. And final couple minutes of the first half, things went off the rails. Is there kind of an added feel to it? Maybe not in the locker room or personally, but just with this being, you know, Anthony Richardson's, I guess, I don't want to say redemption game, but it's his second time starting against Georgia now. It's the only team that he started twice against. So is there kind of an added feel for that? Um, yeah, I feel like uh, AR has a chip on his shoulder um, every game just because um, the people, how they rank him and kind of disrespect him. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'd say he gets another jab at four, uh, uh, Georgia, my bad. Um, but, yeah, I feel like especially, I mean, that's the only team – he'll be really kind of familiar with, you know, because, I mean, he's been making all of his starts. And, I mean, he's seen this team before, a really good team. So, I mean, he'll know what to expect, and hopefully he can use his leadership and kind of get the guys going because he knows what to expect. So, Yeah, and, I mean, just just going into this game, uh, it, it's a bit of a weird situation because Florida, a lot, lot of 12 personnel. That's something that we all know Billy loves to do. He's always loved to do it, and he's probably always going to love to do it. Uh, Utah earlier this year. A lot of 12 personnel, a lot of 13 personnel, which people listening, if you don't know, one running back, two tight ends, three tight ends. Um, and then Georgia is a team where they'll go 11, 12, 13, 22. They'll, they'll show you a whole bunch of heavy looks on offense. Is there maybe not an advantage, but is there a little bit of a sense of comfort where Florida, and I know you're an offensive player, so you're not really going to be going up against that, but is there a sense of comfort there where most teams that have played Georgia have not played a team that will go two tight ends, three tight ends, because that's just not common in college football whatsoever. So is there kind of a sense of comfort where knowing this isn't Florida's first rodeo with facing 
an offense like that and you kind of get to face an offense like that every week in practice? Oh, for sure. I mean, when we go head to head and go out good and practice, I mean, they see a lot of tight ends and them. Uh, even like when the scouts come on the field, you'll hear you'll hear Sap and the guys up front call out a tight end. Like uh, I think it was Eastern Washington week. We tried to run a trick play or that like they stuck me at tackle and shifted the line over to where I was still eligible. And they, I mean, they sent it out fast. I mean, I just feel like with Napier's play styles, they kind of, they kind of process it a little faster when it comes to identifying the tight ends and where they're at and the, what the threats they are. So, I mean, yeah, to answer your question, I think, well, I think they'll be uh, very well off this game. So. So I sweat a lot. We go through this all the time, right? I sweat a lot. Naturally, I live in an incredibly humid place. So that's just, that is beautiful combination there. That is just fantastic. That's just like, you know, spaghetti and pasta sauce. You know, it's, it's just fantastic. Sweat block was created by a doctor to help with his own excessive sweating. So it is doctor created and it is doctor recommended. And it is me recommended, by the way. If you or someone you love is experiencing embarrassing sweat or odor, try sweat block. You can save 20% with promo code locked on at sweatblock.com, also available on Amazon. Yeah, what's kind of been, I, I guess we'll say the message from Billy Napier going into this game where I mean I, I, I feel like a broken record here, but but there's always something extra with this game. So what's kind of been the message from Billy Napier from I mean, I I don't know how much you hear from the defensive side of the ball, but from guys like like Patrick Tony where the coaching staff has, I mean, Florida fans, first of all, very unreasonable. But second of all, they, they've been kind of harsh on the coaching staff. So what's kind of been the feel where this is the this is the bye week, this is your your bounce back time, tough schedule coming up. What's been the message from the coaching staff here? Yeah, I mean, it's been this, it's been the same. Uh, really hasn't changed. Just uh, just the the they they really preach that this game rewards hard work the risk you take, uh, the time you put into it. Um, I mean, football doesn't pick sides, doesn't pick favorites. It's just who puts in the most work and who executes it the best. And, I mean, that's, I think that's what they preach a lot, especially that's why our practice environments are so intense and pressurized because uh, he feels like if you can execute against our good, our best on best in practice, then you can do it in the game. And um, he's also emphasized that we have yet to have a perfect game, that not one player on the team has had a perfect game yet. And he said that's what we're looking for as a team. And I mean, what better team to do it than against Georgia? So um, we'll see who happens. Yeah, it, and is there again kind of an added feel just with uh, realistically national media? Florida has no chance. <laughs> According to the national media, Florida has no chance here. Twenty-two point underdogs, I believe. So how do you kind of, and how has the coaching staff kind of tried to block that out a little bit? Because I know that I believe I've asked you before, and it's been bulletin board material not really a thing that florida focuses on not really something florida cares about because you're either motivated to do it or you're not bulletin board material is not going to help you so how has kind of florida blocked that out of your guys's minds well i mean i feel like we all have the same kind of understanding i mean we've seen this year and like we'll take a sec team playing a, a group of five school or fcs school and we've seen upsets this year i mean so it wouldn't surprise me if we would beat Florida being an SC versus SEC, you know, like I feel like that's a lot more common to happen. Um, we've been seeing upsets all year with a team that shouldn't be in the game. Like take, take us, for example, us against South Florida, we were huge favorites and look how close that game was. So, I mean, I, I feel like we, we can go in there and we can, we can handle them. We can win and we won't be as surprised as everyone else will be. I mean, I'm sure that's normal, but um. Just just by watching the tape and stuff, I mean, we if, if we go out there and play a complete game, we'll we'll give ourselves a chance to finish it. Yeah, and now moving away from the game, finally, um, <laughs> do you guys pay attention to recruiting at all? I know that last time you were here, we kind of talked about uh, before the LSU game, you were working out, and I think it was Cormani McLean came by, and you got to meet him. And so is that kind of something that, as a team, you pay attention to, whether it's you know, adding this guy at my position is future competition or this guy is a senior on our team. So we're going to need new life in that room. Is that something you guys pay attention to at all or not really? Yeah. I mean, that's a good question. Um, I think it's more the younger guys that pay attention to like all the recruits, but uh, 
like position wise, I mean, I don't really think a lot of us look at it as oh, this kid's coming in, he's gonna be my competition. I think we look at it more of like, all right, am I gonna get along with this kid for the next four years? Are we gonna be good teammates? Is is he gonna be able to co- contribute to help us win? You know, I feel like I mean, competition in this sport is inevitable. And I mean, you really don't think you really just like once you get the call, you kind of lose that concept. I mean, because like once a new kid gets in here, um, you you create a bond with them, you you like take them under your wing till he gets up to speed and then the best is going to play. I mean, um, that's where the competition kicks in, obviously, in practice and stuff. But, I mean, I don't really think people dwell on it before they get there and stuff. I feel like there's more of, like, can I get along with this kid? And um, the older guys come into play, like, when the coaches, of course, I'll ask the host or make a good impression if it's a bigger recruit, you know. But, I mean, for the most part, I feel like it's the younger players that pay attention more to Because, I mean, we've just been through the cycle and stuff, so. And just last question for you. Are you looking forward to your first basketball season in Gainesville? Because college basketball season is coming up. First year head coach, the same way you guys have it. You looking forward to it? Oh, of course. I used to play basketball myself. I might have to get a little walk on spot for the team, keep me in shape or something. Hey, I mean, they got Jason Jatobo over there. That looks like a D tackle. So maybe, maybe you guys are like, hey, we'll just. I did meet him. He's a he's a cool dude. Yeah, yeah. I I know that he was. Uh, before the Utah game, he was tweeting out that he was like, yeah, someone just stopped me and wished me good luck this weekend. And I was just like, I don't play football, but yeah. he's a, that dude's big. <laughs> that is a mountain of a man. Um, thank you so much, Hayden. This is Hayden Hanson, Florida Gators freshman tight end. Catch him on Locked on Gators every Wednesday. Catch him on the field every Saturday for your Florida Gators. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be back tomorrow. It's Florida. It's Georgia. It's time. We're doing it. Check out Lockdown SEC for your second listen of the day, hosted by Chris Gordy. Get the best coverage on the best conference, including the best university, the University of Florida. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with Whole Nine Sports and GiantsCountryOfSI.com. And I'll see you all tomorrow.